Hey family, how are you all today? Good morning to everyone. Listen, before Marcus comes and plays for us this morning, I want to remind you that today is our communion Sunday. And so we're going to engage in our fellowship of communion uh, feast uh, at the end of the message. And I do know that many of you may not have received uh, the communion elements, but I want to say to you and suggest to you that uh, whatever elements you have in your home will be absolutely fine as we engage in this. So whatever breads you may have, whether that's crackers, cookies, cakes, uh, donuts, uh, bagels, toast, whatever you have to celebrate the body of Christ being battered and broken and bruised for you, take that, get that ready as we prepare for communion. And then whatever uh, liquid you have in your home, water, juice, milk, and yes, even if you have some wine in the home and that's what you'd like to use, uh, listen, uh, we're not going to uh, say anything about you. Get those ready. Listen, let's hear Marcus as he gives us our, our, our message and music for the day, and then I'll be back to give us a word from the Lord for the day. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, hello, hello, hello. How do you do? At Pleasant Green Baptist Church, we are so glad to see you. We're exalting Christ, embracing community, and engaging culture. We are so thankful and grateful that you have chosen to worship with us today in this virtual experience. And we pray, uh, and we pray that you are uh, experiencing God's benefits and his blessings all over your life, even in the middle of these burdensome times that we live in, in the middle of all of the brokenness and the bitterness and the divisiveness that's happening in our culture and in our community, and yes, even in some of our churches, we pray that God's blessings are with you and going with you today. As we get into our message for today, I'm going to invite you to turn your Bibles and open your Bibles, or if you're using an app, uh, Power to Genesis uh, chapter 45. Uh, and so we're going to be looking in Genesis 45 today to discover more about L-O-V-E, more about love, more about this fall series that we've been talking about. Love is a many splendor thing. And we're going to conclude this, this little section of the struggles of love uh, in families here with Joseph dealing with his brothers who had put him in the pit and ultimately wound him up in Potiphar's house in prison and led him to uh, being the prime minister of all Egypt. Here's the question for the morning. Have fractured family relationships or friendships or any of your relationships left you forsaken, forgotten, or even in your feelings? Is there someone in your life that you have not forgiven uh, or who has not forgiven you for something that happened five years, 10 years, 15 years, 25, 30 years ago? My God. Uh, there are some fractured family and fractured friendships from 30 and 40 years ago. Uh, we want to help you to heal those in this message today. So let's look and see how God's love can prevail and give us victory as we discover and as we discuss love hopes. Love hopes for something much better. Love hopes for something much brighter. Love hopes for something in a much more wonderful way than it has been. And here in Genesis 45, we pick up the story of where we've been in chapter, starting in chapter 37, where we found out that love can oftentimes hurt us. And then moving on through there, we found that love can uh, haunt us and love can hinder us and love can increase our heightened senses of awareness and all those kinds of things. And so we want to look at how love hopes here. But just to backtrack and give you a background, remember from Genesis 37 to Genesis 42, we've seen that Joseph has been cast away by his brothers. Joseph has been cast away by Potiphar and the butler. Joseph has been cast away into prison. Joseph has been cast away into slavery. Joseph has been cast away into so many different problematic situations. But then even in his being cast away, God remembered him and God called him up. God called him up out of the pit. God called him up out of the prison. God called him up to being the second in command of all of Egypt. God uh, put him in the place where he was able to come face to face with his past, face to face with his haters, face to face with the things that had tried to destroy and diminish him. And yet Joseph was still standing. And my encouragement for you all this morning is that no matter what has happened in your past, no matter what kind of pit you've been in, no matter what kind of prison you felt like you've been in, no matter what kind of place in solitude and you felt like, there is a place with God where you can come out and claim your victory. And when he, when he is present with you and you are present with him, he can make some things happen for you. Oh, brothers and sisters, I hadn't even gotten into the message yet and I'm already excited about what God is going to do in this message for you and for me and for all of us who are listening. Let's see what hopes lies ahead for Joseph and his brothers. Here in uh, Genesis 45, in the first three verses, we see that love hopes for revelation. Love hopes for revelation. Verse one says, then Joseph could no longer restrain himself before all them that stood by him. Joseph was now getting to a place where he was, he was in front of his brothers. He was in front of his younger brother, Benjamin. Benjamin had been brought back. Uh, the brothers had gone away and taken their, uh, 
uh, taking their provisions with them. And remember, in the last time we were together, Joseph had put all of their money back in their sacks, put all of their stuff back in their pocket, gave them provision for the journey. And they had gone and come away. And the, and what what's left out in this message is that they had been there for a long time. And, and dad didn't want to send Benjamin back because that was his only son left of Rachel. And the brothers had to convince him to allow him to let them take Joseph back. I mean, let them take Benjamin back with them to get to Joseph and ask for more food. And the only reason they had decided to go back to Joseph is they had now run out of food again. And so they had come back and they brought Benjamin with them. Reuben had given assurances to his father. Look, daddy, I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to look out for him. But if he can't go, we can't go there. And so they were coming back to face now uh, this man who had challenged them to go and bring this brother back. And when they bring him back, Joseph had made a feast for them and lined them up. And in there, he's looking at his brothers in a brand new light. And so hope is love is hoping for revelation that he's seen them they've been revealed to him but joseph has another revelation to give and he couldn't restrain himself for all of them that stood by him and joseph called on his servants and ordered for everybody everybody get out everybody have everybody go out from me have everybody leave out of the rooms i need to talk to my brothers by myself, with myself. I need nobody in here but us. We are the ones who started down this journey together and we are going to be the ones who are going to uh, reveal what everything has happened, lay all of our cards out on the table. And so Joseph asked everybody to get out and there stood nobody in the room but Joseph and now his brothers. And the text says Joseph revealed himself. He made himself known. He untook off his mask, he took off his uh, hairpiece, said to them, look, it is me, brothers. And he wept loudly. He wept so loudly that the Egyptians who he had ordered out of the room could hear him. And he, even, the text even says the house of Pharaoh even heard about his weeping and heard him weeping. And everybody was wondering, why is Joseph weeping like this in this time? dealing with these people who he had accused of being spies. What's going on with Joseph? Why is he crying? Why is he boo-hoo and babbling? Why is he weeping such and so? And Joseph revealed the reason that he was weeping, revealed the reason that he was doing all of these things, the reason that all of these emotions were up in him, the reasons he had ordered everybody out, the reason that he did all of this was because he needed to reveal to his brothers that it is I, I am Joseph. I am the brother who you left behind. I am the brother who you left out. I am the brother who you left for dead. I am the one who you forgot about. I am the one who you were frustrated with. I am the one who you were angry with. I am the one who had a fractured relationship with you. But here I am, it's me. But I got a question, is my father still alive? Is, can my father still be trusted? Is my father alive? I know you brought my brother back, but is my daddy alive? And some of us today, we've been in so many fractured relationships and so many things have been going on in our lives that we need to know, is our father still alive? Is God still alive in our heart? Can God still do what God does? Can God still show up in the middle of my circumstances? Is my daddy alive and can you bring him to me? Can I get close to him? If is it possible that he can still show up and show his presence in my life, Joseph was revealing all of these emotions uh, that he had. He had longed for his younger brother. He had longed for his father. He had longed for a new relationship with his brother. And he's now revealing this information to his brother. And his brothers didn't know what to do with it. The text says his brothers did not answer him. They were not able to answer him for they were terrified. They were troubled. They were taken aback in their spirit by his presence because they thought 
he was dead. Oh, brothers and sisters, isn't it a wonderful thing to know that in the midst of the dead situations of your life, God can reveal that there is still some life left in what you thought was dead. Oh, so in this passage, we see in the very first three verses that hope, that love hopes to reveal itself in all of its calamities, in all of its confusions, and in all of its chaoses, because love hopes to reveal all of our struggles, all of our suppressed emotions, all of the things that had set us back. Love hopes to reveal our suppressed emotions. Here, Joseph is overcome with emotion. Right off the bat, when he sees his brother, he is overcome with the emotions of his past, overcome with the emotions of his present, overcome with the emotions of what this now means for him, what this now means for his family, what this now means for the rest of his future. And because now he has seen his brother, he is hoping that love will reveal that his father is alive, that he has a chance to reestablish a relationship with him. Oh, listen, brothers and sisters, listen, can I tell you what's in my mind right now? Do you all remember uh, uh, the show that Will Smith used to be in uh, where he was the little boy back from Philly and he had come to live with Uncle, uh, Uncle Phil and all of his family and all this stuff? One of the most powerful episodes of that show, uh, 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 and I can't remember the name of it. You all forgive me. I can't remember the name of that of that show to save my life right now. But in that show, uh, there was an episode where Will's character had uh, re reunited with his father. His father had come to him, and they had had this reunion, had this conversation, and ultimately the father decided that he did not want a relationship with Will did not really want to have anything to do with him, had abandoned him as a young boy, and now he's, he's now a, a much maturing young adult in high school, uh, and he goes to Uncle Phil and he said, in, in this great emotional, uh, great passionate plea to Uncle Phil, he talks about all of this, how he didn't need his daddy to make it. He's going to make it without his daddy. He's going to do stuff, even despite what his daddy thought he could do. His life was going to be better. But then he broke down crying and he said, Uncle Phil, why does my daddy not want me? Why does my daddy not love me? Oh, brothers and sisters, can you hear the anguish in his heart when he says to them, and Joseph now feeling that same anguish for all of these years, now he's able to release all of that and say, brothers, it is I. Those suppressed emotions surfaced, and came out of him to suggest that love hopes to reveal those long suppressed emotions that are in our hearts and in our minds and things that we're trying to get over and trying to get past. And you can see right there that even though Joseph's life had gotten so much better, those emotional hurts, those things that had haunted him, those things that had held his mind in captive were still there, and he was hoping to reveal a better and brighter future for his life. But they also reveal, love hopes to also reveal, not only those suppressed emotions, but the strength to endure throughout the problem. All, all of this stuff is coming up because Joseph had endured all of the things that he had endured for a number of years. He was about 17 or 18 years old when he was put in the pit. We don't know how old he was when he was put into prison, but the text says that he had served Potiphar house for some number of years. And we do know he was at least in the prison for at least three years. So he may have been in prison for three, four or five years and serving all of the strength it took to not break down, to not give out, to not give up, to not give over. Joseph was in a position to reveal all of this stuff to his brother because he had endured everything that the world had thrown at him. And brothers and sisters, you have the strength to endure as well. You have some things that you need to deal with emotionally, but you have an endurance inside of you because just as God was with Joseph, God is with us. God is there with us as we are dealing and enduring with all of the problematic pressures of 
of the daily life we live and the politics we live under here in America and all of the things that are going on, brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you today, endure and have the strength to endure, even though your emotions get caught up, even though the things that you see on TV make you want to cry, even though the things that are happening in, in, in different cities around the country with police brutality and racism and all of that stuff want to break you down and give you a flood of emotions, endure until the ends, my brothers and sisters. Keep that strength ahead of you. Keep it up. Don't give in. Don't give out because love is hoping to reveal some strength and some better and brighter days in your life because not only does love hope for revelation, love hopes for reconciliation. And so Joseph was now revealing himself to his brothers, getting in a position and a place where they could somehow get to a place where they put the cards on the table, talk about the stuff that had been in their past, and get to a place where they could find a place where they could say, listen, forgive me, forgive you. This happened, that happened. Let's lay it all out there and let's be reconciled to one another. Now, let me help you right here. Reconciliation is a banking term that deals with settling issues, uh, settling accounts. And so what Joseph was about to do here in verses uh, four, five, six, seven, and eight is Joseph was about to attempt to settle the account. Look, lay it all out there. Let's lay things, let's lay assets next to liabilities. Let's say good next to bad. Let's say positive next to negative. And then let's settle this. Watch what happens. Joseph said to his brother, come near to me. Come closer to me, brothers. Come, please, come here. And they came near him, still scared, still terrified, not knowing what's going to happen, not knowing if Joseph was going to try to seek revenge for them of what they had done to them, uh, done to him so many years ago, not knowing what he was going to do. And he said to them, I am Joseph. I'm your brother. I'm the one you sold into Egypt. Come close to me. I want you to know that I remember that you sold me. I want you to know of the pain I endured. I want you to know all of the emotions that I had. I want you to know how I cried and I begged and I pleaded, and, and but yeah, I endured. He said, but I want you to know this. I, not only, I don't want you to just remember, brothers. I want you to not regret what happened. He says, don't be grieved. Don't be distressed. Don't be angry. Don't regret it. Look, I know, I know, and, 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 and listen, I, don't be mad at yourself right now because you sold me here. Don't have any regrets. We're going to reconcile. We're going to work this thing out. And here's why we can work this thing out. Here's why you can't be angry with yourself. Here's why you can't have any regrets about all of the bad stuff that's happened in your past, all of the stuff that's happened in his, in his brother's past, all of the stuff that's happened in your past. Don't regret that stuff. I know you remember it, but don't regret it because it was God. That's what Joseph said. It was God who sent me. He providentially directed me and dispatched me and just put me in the place to be right here at this time, right now, so that he sent me here ahead of you to save you and to preserve your life. So I know it looked bad. I know we were fractured. I know we had fell out. I know everything that had all happened. I know we, we hadn't spoken in a long time, but brothers, we've got to reconcile this thing. And ultimately, the only reason we need to reconcile this thing is because God was at work in the middle of it. And God can heal us and God can prevail. God can use his love to bring us back to a relationship. And if God is giving us this opportunity, let's not waste it. He said, God is giving us this opportunity. Uh, let's not waste it. God gave me the opportunity to get to the pit and to get to the prison and to get to the place in life where I was more humble. I know I said some things to you all I shouldn't have said in my past. I did some things. I, I, I flaunted my coat in front of you. I flaunted my dreams in front of you. But now I've learned to exercise faith and in God's favor in my life. And so listen, I, can we be friends again? Can we get along? Look, brothers, let's hug it out, work it out. Brothers, let's get this thing straight. He says, listen, brothers, I need you to remember. I need you to not have regret, but I need to warn you. I need, I, need to, I need to give you some information. I need to tell you something. I need to remind you of something. Now, you came to me looking for food in the famine. Now, listen, uh, there have been two years in the famine, but there are five more years to go. We've had two years of poverty, two years of 
food desert, two years of, of not having what we need, two years of, and, and listen, we, we, we as African Americans who've lived in this country have had so two, 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 200 plus 200 years of not having everything we need. And there's some more years that we got to go, but oh, there's gonna, there, there, there's gonna come a day when our famine will turn back into fortune. And we are looking for that day sometime real shortly. Uh, come around here. We're looking for God to intervene and God to do what he does and God to be who he is and God to preserve us alive and God to show himself strong. He said, but brothers, I need you to know that there's two years that have passed and five more years to go in which there will be no sowing or reaping in the land. And listen, I need, I, look, look, I need, I, I was sent here to save your lives by a great deliverance. So don't regret it. I know you remember it, but don't regret it. Look, let me remind you, but let's, let's work it out. Let's hug it out. So now let me remind you, brothers, it was not you who sent me here. I know you put me in the pit. I know you sold me into slavery. I know I got put into prison for uh, some stuff I didn't do. It wasn't you who sent me here. It was God. And I'm willing to forgive and forget as long as we recognize that God is in charge of this thing and God is now in the center of this relationship that we're gonna have. And watch this, he said, he made his, he, God has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of his entire house and a ruler throughout all of the land of Egypt. So when Joseph says all of these things to his brother, love is hoping to reconcile. And he's love is hoping to reconcile. And remember, I told you it's a banking term. So we put everything on the table. We let it all hang out. And we look at, at the balance sheet. And we want to see if we come up short or whether we come up in, in the black. And he says, look, all of our sacrificial struggles. We want to reconcile all of our sacrificial struggles. You struggled. I've struggled. I've had to struggle maybe a whole lot more than you. But listen, we are all in this thing right now. We're in this thing together. And Joseph said, look, the sacrifices that were made in my life to make me to the, get me to the place where I am, the things that I had to endure to get to this place right now, they weren't just, they weren't just to humble me, but they were meant to help you. So we need to reconcile because my sacrificial struggles are put out there to help you and not to harm you and not to hinder you. Brothers, I ain't trying to get revenge on you. God been too good to me. I want to rejoice with you. I want to preserve you. I want to make it possible for you to have the things that you need to have. And so those sacrificial struggles are reconciled here in this relationship. And those things, those shortcomings of his brothers are reconciled here in this in this situation. So the sacrificial struggles and the shortcomings uh, of our siblings or the shortcomings of those who have set us off, the setbacks and the setups that have taken place in our lives have made it possible for us to reconcile because God is now showing himself strong in our situation. So our sacrificial struggles, our setbacks and our shortcomings, and then God showing himself strong is a reason that we can hope to reconcile with all of the things that have been in our life. Because if God had not shown himself strong, if God had not been with Joseph in the pit, if God had not been with Joseph in Potiphar's house, if God had not been with Joseph in the prison, if God had not been with Joseph under the authority of Pharaoh, his brothers would not have been able to show up and he would not have been able to see them and he would not have been able to set them in a position where they were going to all be safe. God's sovereignty, when he's showing himself strong, works for every one of us. And he requires from us that as he's going to show himself strong in us, he requires for us to seek reconciliation in our relationships with others. And so God was calling Joseph into the place of seeking uh, reconciliation, hoping for and seeing. And so, yes, brothers and sisters, love hopes for revelation. Love hopes for reconciliation. And I know you already know the third one. If, if you know where we're going, you already know this. Love hopes for restoration. Love hopes for restoration. Now, no, notice that there's a critical little difference in reconciliation and restoration, and I'll show it to you 
as we go through this text. Verse 10 says, now you shall live in the land of Goshen. This is Joseph talking to his brother. Look, I want you to live in the land of Goshen. I want you to live near me. I want you to bring you, your children, your grandchildren, your flocks, your herds, everything you got, bring them so you can live near me. Restoration, remember, we get to restoration. I want you to live close by me. I want you to live in a place where I can look out for you. I want you to live in a situation where you are close to me at all times. And as you are, as you are living near me, I'm going to provide for you because you are near me, for there are yet five years of famine. Joseph says, I want, brothers, I want you to live close so I can take care of you. Now, if that ain't restoration from the reconciliation, I don't know what it is. He says, look, look, I, look I, I'm not going to put you out here over here. You know how sometimes you can reconcile with somebody, but you don't really want a, a relationship with them. You don't want to be close to them. Joseph said, I want you close so that I can take care of you. I, I, Joseph didn't say, look, I forgive you, but you go on about your business, I'm going to go on about my business. Joseph says, no, brothers, we reconcile. Now let's restore our closeness and let's restore our care for one another. He says, otherwise, you and your household and everything that you have is going to be destroyed. It's going to come to poverty. It's going to come to none. So in other words, we've reconciled the relationship. But if we don't get back close, if we don't take care of one another, all of us are going to face the same kinds of chaos and calamity and, and corruption from being far apart. You got to stay close to me. And isn't that what God says to us? God says, listen, I want to reconcile the relationship with you. So I send you my son who will bleed and die for you hunt and, and be buried for you, be raised again on the third day and make intercession for you. But if you don't come close to me, Oh, you're going to face destruction. You're still going to face confusion. You're still going to face chaos and calamity and all of that kind of stuff out there. I need you to come close so I can take care of you. So he says to him, look, brother, look, see this. Be, be clear with me right here. He's talking about restoration. Now come close. I want to take care of you because I don't want you to be out there on your own uh, in, in the chaos of the world. He says, look, you see. Let your eyes see. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me, brothers. It is my mouth that is talking to you. I know you're terrified right now. I know you're, you're still looking at me right now. Is this our brother? Is, is this the same person we put in the pit? Is this the same arrogant, prideful, flaunting uh, person? This can't be that kind of person. When you have a renewed relationship with God, when God has put you in a renew, in a refreshed and renewed relationship with him, your attitude will change, your actions will change, your, your, your affections will change. And he wanted his brothers to know, yeah, I was that back then, but this is me right now. Look at me with your eyes and see that this is me. Go now, listen, what I need you to do now, I don't want you just to be close. I need you to go get my family. Go get my whole family. Go tell my father of all of the honor and the glory that I've had here in Egypt and everything that you have seen and bring my father down here and bring him quickly. And then the text says, again, he went to his emotions. He hugged his brothers. He fell on Benjamin's neck and he wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck and he kissed all of his brothers and he wept over them. And afterwards, his brothers finally talked with him. Brothers couldn't answer him a word in the first three verses because they were afraid. They didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know if he was seeking revenge or reconciliation. But here now, now that they know restoration is possible, at the end, they're able to sit down and talk. Joseph has revealed all of his heart to them, told them, look, go get my dad. I want to bring him close to Bring my father here. I'm going to take care of you. I want all of you close to me. I'm going to take care of you. I want to keep you from harm and keep you from danger. I want to keep all of you with me. I want you to bear witness to this. 
as God is my witness, as you are looking in my face, hearing the words that are coming out of my mouth, I love you. And my love hoped for a day that I could reveal the dream to you in reality. Love hoped for a day where I could reconcile my relationship with you even before you put me in the pit because I knew something was wrong with us. And love hoped for a day where we would have a restored relationship that we would be able to deal with one another in such a wonderful way. So watch this, when love hopes to restore, love hopes to restore supportive sufficiencies. Joseph says, listen, I am going to be your support system. You come live near me. You come be near me. You come be close to me. You come live by my house. I'm going to provide for you. I will sufficiently support you through these five years of famine that we have left. And I will take care of you. And I will not just take care of you. I will take care of your whole family, your flocks, your herd, and my father. I'll take care of everybody in the house because God has put me in the position to preserve you alive. And isn't that just what Jesus has done for us? God, gee, God has provided us with his son who can sufficiently support and provide for everything we need. But love doesn't just hope to restore support in our life. Love hopes to restore the satisfaction from our social interaction with one another. So love hopes to restore social satisfaction so that we can have a renewed and a refreshed relationship with our brothers and our sisters who we may have fallen out with five, 10, 15 years ago. Yes, I can think of people I fell out with a long time ago, and I may not even know why they fell out with me, but I let them know now in my life when I see them, they are, they, they, listen, I treat them as if they're my best friend in the whole wide world. You know why? Because love can prevail over everything that had been happening to you that you lacked in your past. Love can prevail over everything that uh, you have been dealing with in your past life. Love can, the Bible even says, love overcomes a multitude of sins. And so brothers and sisters, what God is calling upon us to do today, because just as Joseph had done here in this text, God is calling us right now to a place where we are reconciling and restoring relationships as we reveal him in us. And that's what God is calling us to do today. And brothers and sisters, let me help you as we close this message out. Listen, there can be some fractured family relationships. I, I know you've had them, I've had them, I, but they can be reconciled and restored by relying on the actions of something greater inside of you to bring something better and brighter to pass and bring something to bear on this world that they have never seen before. The, the one who chooses faithfulness over foolishness and fighting will always have a much better future than the one uh, who does not choose faithfulness and continues to fight and act a fool in their family. Brothers and sisters, Get yourself and your family and your friends' relationships in order because we need each other right now. We need each other during this pandemic, we, these multiple pandemics. We need each other during this political season. We need each other to deal with police brutality. We need each other to deal with the problems in our community. We need each other to deal with all of the pains and pressures of our lives, the mental aspect, the, the, the mental health and everything else that's going on. Brothers, we need to reconcile and be strong together. That, brothers and sisters, is the message for today. God bless you, God be prayed. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we come to you right now in the name of Christ, in, his, in your infinite wisdom, to ask you, Lord, that you will ensure that love will prevail in all of our relationships and that uh, with one another. Lord, in Jesus' name, we ask it and we give you thanks. In his name. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, we do want to extend the invitation. We want to invite you, if you have had a setback, a shortcoming in your life, if your relationship has been scattered and, and messed up all over the place, and you're ready to reconcile with God and, and allow God to reveal himself in you and to restore that relationship that God created you and God wants to care for you as you come close to him, 
we want to extend that invitation to you right now. If you will contact us uh, uh, at prayer.pleasantgreenbcv at gmail.com, we will be sure to get with you, walk you through the plan of salvation and work with you to find a place where you can grow and glow in the Lord uh, so that you can begin your journey with him. Now, brothers, sisters, family of God, friends on Facebook, YouTube, and listening uh, on, on the phone. Uh, we want to engage in breaking bread together, exercising that ordinance of the great communion, uh, great charge of Christ on his last supper with his disciples saying to them, uh, I'm getting ready to go. But before I go, I need to share something with you. This is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, eat it in remembrance of me, that my body was battered and bruised and my beard was torn out. They put nails in my hand, put a crown on my head, rivets in my feet, so that you could be reconciled to me and my father, so that we could have a restored relationship. And so I could reveal him in my death and my resurrection. Let's eat together. And he said in the same manner, as he took the cup, he said, drink you this cup. It represents a new testament in my blood. This testament will be because of my blood, that as often as you drink it, you show my death until I return. And that's a precious promise that he gives to us that though he is sitting on the right hand of the Father interceding now, one day he will return and restore everything to its natural order with him as the center of all of our worship. Let's drink together. Ah, brothers and sisters, what a wonderful day. Thank God for his grace, thank God for his mercy. We thank God for your joining with us on this day and you may uh, we thank God for your continued prayers for this ministry. As we continue to pray for you, uh, we want to be in prayer for you. We're praying for so many different people and so many different things that are happening. But listen, ultimately, we know that God is sovereign. His sovereignty will prevail, just like his love prevails in everything. And as we get ready to go and hear the, uh, the benediction, as we get ready for that, let me remind you uh, that we need you to survive. We need your prayer support. We need your participatory support to just, even if that means you just join in with us on Facebook, YouTube, or, or the call-in line. Uh, if you can, and if you can find a place and find some extra space in your wallet or in your purse or in your checking account, we'd be glad to receive those funds and be, be good stewards of those funds as we serve our community and serve our church during this time. Uh, won't you interact with us, connect with us on, on our church app and our church website. God be praised, we bless you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Let's hear the benediction now. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace. Now let the whole church say, Amen. Brothers and sisters, we'll see you next time.